So in today's video, we're going to be speaking about the medical nutrition therapy for disorders related to lipid metabolism. Popular sources include pizza, cheese, dairy-rich desserts, butter, lards, So hi everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian, nutritionist, a certified diabetes educator, and owner of KimRoseDietitian.com. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be speaking about the medical nutrition therapy for disorders related to lipid metabolism. Disorders of lipid metabolism include an elevated LDL level, elevated VLDL levels, hypocholesterolemia, and hypertriglyceride so again this video assumes that you do have a basic understanding of medical terminology so the diet approach for treating lipid disorders include decreasing saturated fat while increasing polyunsaturated fatty acids such as omega-3 so saturated fats are found in animal products and these drive up the cholesterol as well as LDL levels so it is recommended with these saturated fatty acids that someone that does have a lipid disorder that can be controlled through diet as well as lifestyle change that the overall intake be less than 7% and the intake of trans fatty acids be less than 1% on a daily basis so the American Heart Association maintains that increasing one's intake of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and limiting the consumption of sweets as well as red meats has been shown to have an overall cardioprotective health benefit. So as I mentioned earlier, the recommendation is to not consume any more than 7% of your total energy intake from saturated fat. Saturated fat is found in animal products, but more specifically related to the standard American diet, popular sources include pizza, cheese, dairy-rich desserts, butter, lards, things that are common in the average American diet. When I'm personally speaking to a patient or a client in regards to trying to figure out what type of saturated fats they consume, I typically like to ask them for a 24 to 72 hour diet recall so that I can get a accurate glimpse of what foods they may be consuming that is causing that lipid disorder. So let's talk about now cholesterol. The therapeutic recommendation is not to consume any more than 200 milligrams of cholesterol on a daily basis and foods that tend to be higher in saturated fat can contain cholesterol as well so some evidence-based research has shown that consuming one egg on a daily basis is not associated with heart disease or cardiovascular disease but it should be noted that consuming seven eggs in a week time frame does have some association with heart disease and cardiovascular disease when I'm speaking to clients or patients something that I do recommend if they do consume eggs in their diet and I'm talking about the whole egg not just the egg white is to consume eggs every other day that's just an example of a recommendation that I do give so cholesterol is mostly found in meat products as well as whole dairy products and some shellfish so the protein recommendation is to get 15 to 20% of protein from your total energy needs. And a plant-based source of protein can help to decrease saturated fat as well as cholesterol. So for this reason, I'm always trying to encourage my patients to consume those whole grains, the fruits, the nuts, the legumes. So the plant kingdom, especially with nuts because nuts also may have a cardioprotective health benefit. And of course, all of this is depending on the patient's medical history because there are certain populations that you may not want to increase the intake of nuts. So we're gonna take a next look at the fiber intake. So 25 to 30 grams of fiber is recommended for individuals that have heart disease as well as cardiovascular disease. It is recommended specifically with the fiber intake to try to get a soluble fiber in your diet. And for this reason, I like to recommend the DASH diet plan of eating as well as the Mediterranean diet. Looking at these two specific diets, which currently evidence has shown that these diets 
sides do have a overall heart health benefit. So again, when you're looking at the client, these are the medical nutrition therapy recommendations, but I want you to look at the patient on a holistic basis because we do not live in, in a bubble. Guys, this is it. This is the medical nutrition therapy for lipid disorders. If you have any specific questions that you want to ask me related to, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. As usual, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.